Hey there, and welcome to this week's episode. I am your host, Jay Green, and I am super excited to be bringing you one of the world's best when it comes to podcasting. Today, I am joined by John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and we are going to go deep on what it takes to build a kick-ass team. JLD shares the number one question Tony Robbins taught him to ask incoming employees to ensure that you retain your top talent. Super powerful. You don't want to miss that one. We also touch on his non-negotiable routine that sets him up for success. We go into this mass resignation that's happening right now and the life flat phenomenon because we are recording in the midst of the pandemic and we talk about what you can do to safeguard your business and your team from suffering from either of these sweeping uh, inconveniences to an employee, <laughs> employee, employer. <laughs> uh, we also go into how, how JLD manages his remote workforce. So he has a distributed team all over the world. We talk about the tools that he uses and also the methodology for his meetings to keep them staying connected, most importantly, happy and on fire. So let me tell you a little bit more about the man himself. So John Lee Dumas is the founder and host of the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire. With over a million listens of his 3,000 plus episodes, JLD has turned Entrepreneurs on Fire into a media empire. It generates over a million listens every single month. It also generates seven figures of net annual revenue eight years in a row. And his first traditionally published book, The Uncommon Path, wait, The Common Path, to uncommon success <laughs> is the modern day version of Think and Grow Rich, but with a revolutionary 17 step roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment. So let me just restate that again for you. The book is the common path to uncommon success. Uh, you guys that have listened to me know that I'm <laughs> dyslexic, listexic at the best of times. So I'm doing my best to get it out straight. But most importantly, though, today we're not talking about all the, the financial freedom stuff that you've probably heard him talk about before. Today, we are kicking ass with building teams. So tune in. Let's hit it with JLD. Where are you calling from? That's a beautiful backdrop. Yeah, I am on the beautiful Gold Coast, Australia. So Gold Coast this way, Byron Bay this way. It is nice. what I like to call heaven. <laughs> yes, I've, I've been there. I've been to the Gold Coast. It is. Oh, yeah. 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 It's look, if you're going to get stuck anywhere in a pandemic, this doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're in Puerto Rico, right? Yeah. I've been in Puerto Rico for five and a half years, which also does not suck. Yeah. Well, I was supposed to come and run a business accelerator there just as the pandemic hit. So, I was so devastated. I was like, come and go through Cuba, then run a two-week accelerator in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and then jet to Amsterdam with Mine Valley. And but this. <laughs> yeah. Well, next time, or I should say, if you make it next time to Puerto Rico, let me know. I shall definitely hook you up. Awesome. Cool. So I thought I'd just get started with a little bit of a get to know you that everyone's heard your bio by now. So Tell me, I absolutely love talking habits, behaviors, and routines. What's your favorite like routine or ritual that, that gets your juices flowing and sets you on fire? Well, I will say it's my three-hour morning routine, which sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. But I can promise you this, and this is what I recommend for people. Don't start with a three-hour routine. That's crazy. I never started with one. I started five, really more six years ago, with a 15-minute routine. And then every few months, I've literally just added like one thing. Maybe it was a 12 minute meditation. Maybe it was a 10 minute journaling. Maybe it was this or that. And I'll kind of go through my three hour routine now. But again, it was just kind of like one building block at a time. And now because it's my priority, it's just part of my day. So that's kind of the habits that I love and I stick with. And, and just a real quick run through and I'll skip over a couple of things, but essentially it's 
you know, taking my dog on at least a two and a half mile walk every single morning, getting outside in the sun, the fresh air, like really grounding myself to get started on the right foot is super important. Then I do a 12 minute stretching session. I have a 10 minutes red light therapy where I'm just like literally getting hit by these red lights, which is amazing. Um, then I'm doing a three minute, uh, rebounder, just jumping on my rebounding machine for three minutes, just to kind of get that lymphatic system going. Then I do exactly. Yep. Keep doing that. Thank you. And then I, uh, definitely like to do my weight training with my trainer. And that happens three days per week. I do 25 minutes of weight training with Jeff, my virtual trainer. Then I'm in the sauna for 30 minutes. I have an infrared sauna. Then I'm in a cold plunge for five minutes at 45 degrees, which is freezing and amazing. I'll tell you proud. That, yeah. When would be really proud. And by the time I get out of that, like I am just crackling with life and energy and it feels great. Amazing. That is so cool. Uh, I'm, I'm big on morning routines. I literally just wrote on Instagram this morning, my favorite morning routine. And I've just had my cold shower. I've done my Wim breath work, watch the nice. sunrise. So yeah, I, I, I love the, the premise of habit stacking as well. I always tell people, don't try and go balls to the wall, which is my own personal life motto is balls to the wall or nothing at all. But most people don't have the appetite for it or they burn out. It's just not sustainable. And it's just so much easier to get one thing down, take the next step, get one thing down, take the next step. And then you become non-negotiable and you're like, yeah, I don't want to lose any of them, but I want to keep adding some great things. So that's nice. awesome. Uh, so tell me, your best advice for our listeners on how to build a kick-ass team. So if you want to build a kick-ass team, you've got to really ask yourself one question. How am I going to keep this team for a long time? Because what happens is people build great teams and they train great people, but then guess what? They don't keep those people happy and those people now have great skills and now they go off and they find other opportunities. So there's one thing that I learned from Tony Robbins that was, I thought, fantastic advice. I got to spend four days at his resort in Fiji a couple of years Boy. ago. Um, yeah, it was unbelievable. And was Eric Edmeets away... there with you? Who's that? Eric Edmeets? No, nope, not on this one. This was his top 10 affiliates for his launch for KBB. And it was a blast. Like Lewis Howes was there, Jenna Kucher, a lot of fantastic entrepreneurs. And I took away a lot from that. But one thing I took away that I thought was so amazing, that's really based off of your question and, and how Tony's built such an amazing team is he sits every person down before he hires them. And he asks them one question, what would make this job the absolute best job in the world. And he listens to their answer. And some people will say, well, I love to travel. And so if I could just have a three-day weekend every weekend, I'd work 10 hours a day for Monday through Thursday to have those three days off because I can't really travel much with just two days on the weekends. Somebody else might say, well, I just had a baby. If I could just come into work at 10 a.m. so I could have the whole morning with my child and actually feel like it was quality time, I'll work till 6 or 7 p.m. because blah, blah, blah. And some, someone might say, it's, it's all about the money because I'm young and I'm looking to save up. And so I, it's going to be this dollar amount, X, Y, Z. And that is something that people really need to think about because a lot of times you as an employer just do a blanket. You're like, I'm going to pay everybody more. I'm going to have everybody work these awesome hours, but everybody has different wants. Everybody has different needs. And if you give somebody that individual, that one unbelievable yes to what they ask for, that individual knows they're not going to get that anywhere else. They're not going to get exactly what they ask for anywhere else and they're never going to leave. So again, it's not a blanket X, Y, or Z. It's a sit down individual. What would make this the best job for you? Ah, preach. The understanding of different people's intrinsic and extrinsic motivators and being able to meet them where they're at. And then that way they feel seen and heard. They feel like they are connected and you are serving them in a way that they need to be served is unbelievable. And I think that is one of the hugest um, dropping of the balls that employers have bringing people in because they think it's all about them and I pay them money so they should all be happy. And that might be what motivates us, but not them. So I love that advice. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you, how, how open you are to cussing, but here we go. Uh, what's your biggest fuck up <laughs> when it comes to leading your team? And what lesson could you give the listeners from that mistake? 
Well, I was in the army for eight years, so I definitely am not afraid of any cursing. And I probably heard every way, shape or form. In fact, when I was in Iraq for 13 months, I was stationed with a Aussie battalion. Oh God. (laughs) If you think Aussies can curse Aussie soldiers, they are next level. So I mean, Brian, Aussie sailors. Oh man, that's probably the next, next, next level. Um, So yeah, but micromanaging would be my one word answer. Like whenever I've micromanaged somebody, I do a lot of things. That's the fuck up of that. You know, when I micromanage, I'm not just micromanaging, which is a waste of my time because now I'm paying somebody to do something and I'm like over like watching and micromanaging that thing. So now two people's times, mine included, are being used for one task. And that, that, that makes no sense. But also- I'm taking away their opportunity for creativity, for growth, for feeling like this project is theirs. When you just say, hey, hey, listen, this is what I need done. This is yours now. And you give people ownership over that thing, then they will take pride. They will take ownership. That will become their thing. And if you've hired the right people, which you probably have, they now own and are prideful of that task. And they are never going to want to fail, not even necessarily for you, for themselves, because it's theirs and they want to succeed. Yeah. I love that. It reminds me of Tony's six human needs, right? If we can satisfy their growth and their contribution needs, and they feel like there's some significance there, then you're helping to fill up their cup and grow as a human. It's going to make them less likely to leave as well, but they're going to feel empowered and they're going to be trading far more than time for money. It's They're going to be giving you the best work and ultimately you're going to be giving them the gift of more self-expression. So that's that's an amazing one. So many people, I think, don't realize that they're fucking up when it comes to micromanagement <laughs> and the impact that's having on their ability to, to grow their business. Okay, so throughout the world at the moment, we're in still in interesting times when we're recording this podcast the great resignation is upon us and the, the lie flat phenomenon that's starting to take over the world. What do you think that business owners and entrepreneurs need to do to keep their teams on fire and engaged and turn it up? Well, listen, the reason why the great resignation is happening is because people have always hated their jobs. Most people, not all people, obviously, but most people hate their jobs and they just kind of realize that, whoa, like number one, like I hate my job. Number two, I might die because there's a scary thing going around. And of course that's an over, you know, dramatizing of the situation because percentage wise, you know, it's, it's not been super incredibly life-threatening for the majority of the population, but enough that people are kind of like taking a step back and being like, well, what if I did die like tomorrow, maybe not even from COVID, but from anything, what if I did die? They're like, well, I'm living a life that kind of sucks. Like I'm getting up and going to a job that I don't like. And so people are just not willing because of having that kind of shoved in their face of, whoa, like this is something I don't enjoy doing. Why do I get up every day and do it? When I've now had this time, you know, during lockdown to like watch shows like yours and mine and do some research and find that there are actually people out there in this world doing things that they enjoy doing and making a go at it. And maybe they're not multimillionaires or, you know, crushing it financially, but is that even the end goal? And that's why that's uh, this FIRE movement, which is financial independence, retire early. is such a huge thing right now because people are realizing that, you know, what if I did on make brand like for you, buddy. <laughs> really on brands, $5,000 a year, uh, a month, but I really only had to spend one or $2,000 a month because I was being smart about you know, where I was living and what I was doing and all these different things. And so people just realizing that there's a lot of opportunities out there. And so I think that people are resigning from opting in to a job that they don't like, but those people that are resigning, they're not just sitting on the couch, eating popcorn, watching Netflix, like they're doing things. Some of them are getting into crypto, into NFTs, into play to earn gaming or becoming entrepreneurs or, you know, doing X or Y or Z. They're not just, again, sitting on the couch doing nothing because most people realize after a pretty short amount of time that it's hard to be happy when you're not relevant in this world, when you're not really giving like some positive impact back to society, when you're not an active and meaningful part of society. And that comes pretty quickly when people, again, have this step back from the, the real world, which a lot of people have, which is why 
retirement's the number one cause for death. Like a lot of people work their whole lives at a job they hate, thinking they're going to have the golden years, and they retire and they realize, well, this sucks. My life's over, and they kind of drift off into another Netherlands. And it's really sad, but it's true. And now, because of what's happened in the world the past couple of years, it's being thrown at people's faces at a lot younger age for a lot of people, and they're saying it's just not making sense. So again, it kind of goes back to answer your base question, which is how do we keep our team together? By just doing the things that we talked about, by making their job a worthwhile place to be for that individual, for them. Love it. Love it. So I know that you've got a pretty distributed workforce around the world as well. Uh, a lot of our listeners uh, either have that or they've been forced to have it during the pandemic, or it's a goal of theirs so that they can go and live in a more lifestyle-based location themselves, and they're going to have to remote manage. Can you walk us through some of the technology to, or tools that you use to, re, to manage a remote workforce, but also, and most importantly, how do you keep them connected and how do you keep them feeling like they're an actual team rather than an app on the end of a keyboard? <laughs> Absolutely. So number one, the tool that we use that we literally could not live without because of how our business is set up is Asana. Like Asana just works for us. It's a great system that allows us to have tasks that, you know, allow people to check them off, to have an inbox, to know what they need to do when they need to do it. There's reminders built in um, and all that jazz, but to kind of go above and beyond like what you were saying with how do, now how do people just not feel like they're just logging into a place like Asana and just working out of that all day. We have real connections. You still get the yeah. unicorn like or the or a rainbow or something when you tick off enough tasks in a in Asana? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's that definitely happens. Um so what people also need to realize is we have like real virtual meetings too. So we we do this what we you and I are doing right now um with with our virtual assistants in the Philippines in Pakistan because we want them to know that hey like we're here, we see you, we hear you. We know that the the, the re reality of human connection is is important and it's meaningful. So we bring this into our flow every single week. Because you know, if you don't have it on the schedule, like months could go by. You'd be like, I haven't logged on and seen X, Y, or Z for so long, and that person might just be like in their house, like on lockdown, like not seeing anybody. And especially the Philippines, crazy. they couldn't go outside for like two years. Two they years, literally, it was crazy. So I mean, you've got to bring that kind of social ex experience to your people, let them know that your team, they're going to see your face, hear your voice, make the eye contact, be there. And do you use any like formula or structure to say running your huddles or running your meetings to that reminds you to do connection pieces or what's, what's the way that you run those weekly catch-ups? Yeah. So we do have quite the structure. That's like kind of Kate's cup of tea. So she kind of has it broken down where, you know, everybody goes around, they share a success from the past week, a lesson learned from the past week. Um, you know, a key thing that we do in our meetings, I think is really important is like, what's something that we don't know about your job that because you're in it um, would be a massive improvement because you're there, you're seeing it. It's kind of like when Henry Ford used to walk down the assembly line, he would tap somebody on the shoulder and be like, how can I make your job better? Because why would Henry Ford know how to make that person's job better? He never is doing that job. So you have to ask your people how you can make their job better, how their job can be made better because they're in it, they're living it. And you want to encourage them to be thinking about ways to improve. And then, you know, what's really key is at the end of every call as well, we always share like what's one major goal we're going to accomplish in the next week, um, as well as, you know, what kind of accountability are we going to give to each other throughout that week? Awesome. It's so similar to the structure that I run. I'll talk to the Ooh. listeners after we wrap up yeah. around that. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of this today. What What's the parting words that you'd love to leave our listeners so they get off here going, that was fire? Yes. So it was really the words that lit and spoke and starked, um, stoked my fire back in 2012, which is a quote by Albert Einstein. Try not to become a person of success, but rather a person of value. And I think if more of us can just stop chasing success, stop chasing what we think success may feel or look like, and start just saying, how can I be a person of value today in this moment to my people that will get you on the path to the success you're looking for? Amazing. This has been fire. Thank you, JLD. 
I know the listeners are going to grab some absolute gold out of that conversation. Awesome. Thank you, Jade. Take care. Thank you. Cheers. Damn, wasn't that good? Okay, let's unpack a few more of those concepts. Let's just go through it and deconstruct it a little bit more. Let's start with the number one question Tony says to ask when people come in. You heard me say the importance of this, but honestly, if you take the time to understand what truly motivates your people and meet them where you're, where they are at, and utilize that in your regular one-on-ones, in your performance reviews, we like to call them mission reflection sessions, and help them not only to achieve what they want to achieve in life, and you understand how working for you serves their happiness and serves their greater purpose, you will get far, far more than trading dollars for hours. They will go to war with you. They will bring their best. They will bring their A game and they will be happy. And we know that happiness is the greatest hack to productivity and profitability. So you're to use these powers for good, not evil people, but make sure that you are connecting with your humans and seeing what is important to them and how you can support them as a whole human. I absolutely guarantee this is the key to retaining top talent. Okay, let's move on now to the lesson he learned, the fuck up of micromanaging. If you go through the some of the other podcast episodes, you'll see we've done some work around profiling and the importance of that. But This is where it's really, really key to making sure that you understand not only your profile and natural tendencies, like if you are a micromanager, whether you don't all use all of your words to explain so people don't actually get what you want them to do and therefore you'll feel like you have to micromanage because they don't get it. Problem is probably you. Listen to the Extreme Ownership podcast, actually. But it's a missed opportunity. You should be hiring people smarter than you to do the tasks that you don't want to do. So if you're hiring people smarter than you to do the tasks you don't want to do, why the fuck are you micromanaging them and trying to tell them your way? Makes sense, right? Okay. So how do you do this though? You need to make sure that you've got regular feedback loops. You need to go through what JLD was saying with those weekly huddles and asking them, for how can we make their jobs better? How can they make their jobs better? Finding out what it is that they're up to and how they can do it better. That way you will feel like you are across the situation and you can do what only you can do by giving the advice to tweak and turn the dials up so that they can step up. We know, as you heard, that when they have contribution, growth and significance, they are more invested in staying with you and they will feel happier. So once you empower them, they will go above and beyond. If you put them in a box, if you make them feel stupid, if you make them feel like they're not contributing, they are going to bounce. So first step is for you. Take extreme ownership. Where are you at cause for them maybe not doing the job to the standard or the hitting the expectations you have on them? Where do you need to recognize your own profile maybe making you want to be the micromanager, be in control. What can you do to introduce feedback loops so that you feel like you've got the knowledge that you need to feel safe and secure and give them the tools to be able to turn the dial up on things, okay? So they're the top tips for making sure you don't micromanage and you get the best out of your people and turn up their genius. Now, mass resignation and the life lap phenomenon. Again, if you're doing all of the things that we've talked about in this, it's not going to be as big an issue for you. But you can also look at what you can do, again, to meet people where they're at. Can you do different work hours for them? Can you offer flexibility? Can you do split shifts? Can you do job share? Can you let them work remotely? Really have a look at how you're going to get the best out of your person, how them as a human wants to live their life and how that could potentially work. So I want you to redesign your way of working, reimagine it and really connect to who your people are and see what you can do so that they can serve you with their genius and the most amount of energy and passion. 
Okay, and lastly, rem Remy? <laughs> lastly, <gasps> managing remote workforces or distributed teams. JLD said he loves Asana. I use Trello when I set up our new clients and bring them into the team engineered fold and the build a kick-ass team program, I set them up on Trello because it is a really simple project management tool that all employees can use. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's got every power up that you need to be able to project manage, have your task list, see your calendar view, and make it also beautiful. So I love Trello and Asana is also great, but if you wanna take things up a notch, the way that I run my team and Kyle's team uh, over at APT, the engineers, we use ClickUp. Now ClickUp is a next level advanced version. It's not for the faint hearted. Um, it can be amazing with the automation, but you need to have someone that is running the system. If you're used to using Infusionsoft or something like that, then this would be okay. But Asana or Trello is definitely way, way better. Now, I have a number of free tools um, that I offer. And I so I have Trello boards for how to hire heroes, uh, which is a full um, structure and templates on writing amazing job ads and your recruitment funnel. I have your build a kick-ass team board, which goes through all the elements to create a killer culture and embed all of my systems to build your kick-ass team. We have an onboarding success system. Ah, we hire heroes and then we don't set them up for success because we don't or don't onboard them correctly. So we have an onboarding success system as well. And then we've got some other tools for running meetings like the meeting maximizer and our one-on-one -on -one templates and things like that. So if you're interested in any of those tools, make sure that you send me a email send me an email, uh, jade at jadegreen.com.au and just say, just tell me what you need. So you listen to the podcast and you need some help and we'll hook you up. Uh, if you really want to take the next step though and have me help you build your kick-ass team and engineer your team for greatness, I have a three-day intensive that I will be doing regularly. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you shoot me an email or drop me a DM saying kick ass team and we will help you take the next step. Okay, guys, the episode's been dope. I can't wait to hear how you guys go about applying this and building your own kick ass teams. <laughs>